Welcome back to Pod Sauce. I'm Dax Holt. I am Alicia Renee. Uh, I'm, I have to say, I, I was a little nervous, like when we were uh, being prepped on today's guest, just because I started off at BET and MTV, and then I had a run over at E, uh, because I have been a longtime fan of our next guest and her mother. Uh, let me just say, Melissa Rivers, host of <laughs> Melissa Rivers Group Text Podcast. Mel, can I call you Mel? Let me <laughs> Everybody you. does. Can I, can I Everybody you? does. Can I call you Mel? I have, Absolutely. I have loved you since, obviously, the red carpet, uh, just seeing your commentary. I, I, I love the way you combine comedy versus, like, you give your real in-depth fashion expertise insight and you do it so seamlessly. Uh, I know you and Dax have your own, uh, you, you guys have done this before when you were on Hollywood Raw, uh, you know, speaking about the yes. Marvelous Miss Ma Ma Maisel, Mazel. Marvelous Miss Maisel. There's barely any black people on there, so I just breeze right over <laughs> it. It's totally fine. We're just gonna. <laughs> It's just going to keep that real. So You know what? I like to pretend it doesn't exist, too. Fair. So there you We're go. here together, Mel. You and I. We are here. There you go. Thank and you. Both, so. And we both come out of MTV. See what I'm saying? And then we've been, and then we've been you know, pushed out of, of two, three different nests. And yet here we are, still making things happen. <laughs> Always. Thank you so much for, for coming on Pod Sauce uh, with us. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you. <laughs> hi, Dad. Hi, hi. Good to see you again. Uh, Good so to see you. I want to jump into your podcast because if someone hasn't listened to your podcast before, it is so good. You're, you're so funny. And I think what I love about you is you don't have that filter. And I think that's something <laughs> that people loved about your mother and you have that. And I think when, when people speak from their heart and they speak honestly, that is the best kind of podcast to listen to. And I'm, I want to tell people out there, if you've never listened to her, her, her podcast, go check it out. It's unfiltered. It's great. And you're talking in, with not only celebs, but you're talking about everything that's going on in the world and your perspective of it. And I think it just has such a comedic aspect to it that it's really enjoyable to listen to. Mm -hmm. Did I sum it up properly? Oh my God, can you be my new PR person? <laughs> Hired. Yes. But yeah, no, it's true because I always feel like I want to talk about and talk to people and things that are interesting to me. And as you guys both know, if you are not interested in the subject, meaning the topic or the person, mm -hmm. you can only force yourself to focus and listen for so off, for so long. Before, I mean, if I'm not engaged, why would my listeners or my viewers be engaged? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the approach I always took on the red carpet, which was if I wasn't excited to be there, why would our viewers be excited to be there? Mm -hmm. So I always felt like, let my excitement show. Let my, like, be open about what's going on around me. Yeah. You know, for as cynical as I am, on the business side of our world, right. I am still such a fan. Yeah. yeah. And such a, you know, I can't wait for people to get there and I can't wait to see what they're, what they're wearing. And oh my God, what are they going to say? You know, so I think a lot of it, as you guys know, you have to be engaged. And with the red carpet, I was always made sure that I was excited because then I knew our viewers would be excited. It's so funny, Melissa, because your excitement and Savannah's excitement is very palatable uh, within the podcast. Uh, I was telling Dax, uh, I wasn't familiar um, with, because there's three million, you know, podcast shows out there. And I was like, Melissa has a podcast? Let me get into it. <laughs> and so the episode I listened to, I was like, yo, one, two things. One, you can tell she and Savannah have been friends for a very Sabrina, long time. Sabrina. 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 Sorry. I keep saying Sabrina. Sabrina. You got the S right. She's been with our family for 30 for years. That's what Dak said. I was like, because the way they keep, girl, okay, and then, did it, I'm like, <laughs> they have to have such a great relationship, you know, yeah. that that can exist in the space, and there, there is no, like, there's no, we, no, you didn't take that personally or anything like that. It's, but it's two best friends clearly 1, talking together. One thousand percent. The episode I listened to was you guys had the uh, the woman. She's a writer. I can't remember um, her name off the top of my head. I just listened to it this morning, uh, but she was covering. Um, uh, she started off from the New York Times, uh, and she she. Had oh, about the 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 uh, Michelle McBee. Yes. 
and her yes. book that she has coming out, it has like a whole mob element to it, oh, which it's crazy. Girl, like, like the, the true crime the, the conspiracy theory elements to it. I was so immersed. I I was late to I was 30 minutes late. Thank you, Melissa. I was 30 minutes late to work today because I was listening to the podcast. And I well, was, thank you. I wasn't doing what I should have been doing because I was like, and then what happened as I'm currently like, <laughs> <laughs> Great, great podcast. Thank you. Like I said, if I'm interested, yeah. I, I have to assume that other people are interested. Mm. Absolutely. The episode that I was recently listening to was the Gail King episode. Wait, wait, do you not have shoes on, Dax? No, and you feel free to take your shoes off, Melissa. Oh, mine Get are. comfortable. But I'm just noticing your blue <laughs> yeah. toes on your socks. Blue and red. <laughs> No, we we want to be comfy. We want you mm -hmm. to feel comfy. So we take our shoes off. We get we relax here. Just this leave just leave your pants on. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> if our ratings start looking shady, <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, they're coming up. Exactly take like for the team. There you go. <laughs> no, I was. Listening. Well, I've taken a lot for the team. <laughs> We'll call you up and be like, Mel, listen, Mel, sis, we were in the struggle together. We, we need, need to start doing yeah. it for the team. And, and we're doing no pants Wednesday here. Do so. well. <laughs> Come on by. Um, no, so I was listening to the Gail King episode. I love Gail. I, I know that you two have been friends forever. But her talk... <laughs> It's funny because you, she's always so like pulled together on CBS, and you know, and then to hear her just having a chit chat with her friends, I love that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And she has such good stories. I mean, she's known you for so long that mm -hmm. she re she remembers when your son was born, you know, and, and yeah. those kind of stories you don't get every day mm -hmm. unless there is that true connection for years and years. And I don't know, it's just a fun episode to listen to and kind of hearing her talk about planning her daughter's wedding and having it at Oprah's Rose Garden. It's just, it's a fun inside look into Gail's life. It was, I loved that interview. We had, I had the best time. Luckily, Gail did send a note saying she had a great time. Mm. Um, again, and I think it's part of it is, if you're good at your job as an interviewer, you also know how to be a good guest. Mm -hmm. Because yep. you try not to do all the shit that other people have done that annoy you. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of that, speak it. That is <laughs> honestly no great transition because you guys started talking about what it's like to interview people and some of the people that you've interviewed, like Tommy Lee Jones, who was horrible to you, and yep. you know, and how that sticks in your brain. That mm -hmm. it's like you're here for an interview. Yeah. Give it up. That's that's why you're here you know, act like you're enjoying this or just fake it for a little bit because we're all in this together. I yeah. loved that conversation that you guys had. Well, yeah, I mean, especially like it goes back to the red carpet. It's like, if you don't want to be interviewed or you don't want to talk, go in the back. Yeah. Fair, fair. You know, and by the way, everybody's out there trying to do a job and it's such a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think very often people forget that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Melissa, but in that same vein, uh, you've been in this business for so long. And like Dax oh. was saying, you do have so many beautiful personal relationships with people that you also have to do a job, right? Yes. Um, what is that conversation like with you when you have someone that you may know it may serve the platform that you're working for or working with, but you also just want to be respectful of your intimate relationship that you may have with the person that you're interviewing? That's always tricky. And if it's someone that you just have, you know, an acquaintanceship with or a social friendship with, you you do know the lines. Right. And if it's someone that you have a very close relationship with, again, you really know the lines and you have to be honest and say, you know, I'm not allowed to talk about this or I'm not gonna ask that, but I have to allude to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or I mean you just you're just you just be, I'm not in the gotcha business. Right, right. But you also don't want to look dumb to your audience and be like, I didn't the ask. Address the elephant right. in the, the room. The question that everyone's right. interested right. in, but how, how do you tiptoe around yeah. it? Who's been or also you say, look, we're friends and it is not my place. I mean, you share, I, I always feel like you share with your listeners, you share with your viewers like, hey, we're good friends and I'm simply not going to talk about this. Fair. Because my friendship comes first, but there's a million other things to talk about. Mm -hmm. Who, who's been your... And I don't want to say favorite guest because I feel like that's such a cheap thing. But who has been the guest that you walked away from the interview on your on your podcast? You were like, wow, that was either really revealing or just mm -hmm. such a great conversation that left you so like happy to have them on. That's a really good question because they fall into different categories. 
one of the most recent ones I did, <clears throat> and it's because it was a it was a very topical conversation, was uh, Summer Sanders. Okay. Right after the Olympics, mm -hmm. and we really I, genuinely liked each other, and we're excited to meet each other, even though it was via Zoom. But just to talk about how sports and 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 coverage of sports and pressure on athletes how that's changed since she was an Olympian mm -hmm. and how her biggest pressure coming into the games when she was, you know, the number one swimmer in the world was that she was coming in as the reigning NCAA champion. Mm -hmm. And then you tell it. And so it, the, the pressure was different. It wasn't like, and we were speaking obviously about like Simone Biles where the world is waiting for you to screw up mm -hmm. yeah. and that kind of pressure and how, social media and the way and television coverage and media coverage has changed this experience for athletes yeah. and endorsements. And now there's so much money, you know, Summer said she went to the games and then she went back to Stanford and was back living in her, you know, dorm room with her roommate. That doesn't happen anymore that there's, you know, and, and all these, these athletes now, and I, and I keep thinking of two, which are really old school, Debbie Thomas mm -hmm. and Eric Hyden, who I believe both went on to med school and are both orthopedic surgeons. Yeah. It's not like it is now where it becomes completely defining of who you are, how the public perceives you and, and stuff like that. And I thought it was so interesting to get that perspective. But and I do love, Melissa, in that same vein, I do love the level of transparency that is happening, both with the media, but also on the celebrity side, as it pertains to mental health being wealth, because you actually had a whole episode on your podcast. Yes. You, you, and I'm a big mental health advocate, which yes. is why, again, when we started discussing that and how it's changed and having to, you know, finally someone's talking about the pressure mm -hmm. on these athletes. Yeah. You know, so it was it was a very in-depth conversation about that. And it was fascinating even just to talk to her about the timeline of how it's changed. But even the, and there's a dual side to that, right? Because, you know, one, as women, and then two, women personalities, women in front of the camera, were not always allotted that space or that time to say, I'm not okay. You know, and three, me as a woman of color, you know, so seeing how prevalent these conversations are are happening right now, I'm encouraged and I am so happy that, you know, we do have the Simone Biles and uh, what's my other young sis? I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, Naomi, Naomi um, Osaka? Uh, yes, Osaka. you know, being, listen, you all will wait and you will wait and deal because I'm not okay. By the way, and I agree with you 100% and I always think about, you know, with all the coverage, like with Naomi Osaka and this and that, the other thing you want to say, guys, yet you wonder why she's stressed out. She won her first major and the fans boo. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine? How do you ever get past that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that, I mean, this is a whole nother conversation, but it's like you start to forget that athletes are humans and yeah. they're not, and not just a commodity. And mm -hmm. I think that's really what it comes down to is America not America, the world will look at athletes as commodities and go out there, perform so that it makes us feel good rather than, this is a person. We're this quick is, to dehumanize. Yeah, we're it's, very it's, quick to dehumanize people. It's, it's crazy. Well, also we're talking about people who we are seeing at the tops of their games yeah. and, and we forget the pressure that goes along with it and that, you know, really the priority is continue is, is to continue and be your best. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's so hard to do that when the world is watching. And that's one of the things we talked about with Summer was it's changed. Yeah. And it is no wonder that these people <laughs> are having these issues. And thank God they're speaking out. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many other platforms now for people to consume and to commoditize. Com com what am I saying? Commoditize. Commoditize. Is, is that the word? The word? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm gonna use it. Something like that. You get what I'm saying. Like you know, I love made up words. I mean, listen. If call, we say it like it is Al one, Sharpton then. Out here, you know, Al, Al Sharpton is a, a wordsmith. He'll just pull a, air, a word out of the air. But um, yeah, I, I think it's so. It, it's we're so quick to dehumanize uh, not just athletes, but celebrities or just people of means uh, because people equate with having an, an abundant amount of money to you should be okay. You know, you're rich, you're wealthy, and not to say that, you know, that's true or whatever, but it's 
at the end of the day, everyone is, we're all still people, right? And, you know, you can argue both sides of the pendulum. More money, more problems. You know, money doesn't make you happy. All of these other things. Well, <laughs> well my mother always said it was, it was much easier to be unhappy on your private yacht. 1,000%. <laughs> However, Melissa, I don't have a private yacht, babe. You know, and... <laughs> It's much better to be unhappy on a yacht. For sure. Oh. I, would, I would much much rather be kicked out of uh, what a Lamborghini than my Honda. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is so funny. I, you know what? I, that's something just popped in my head. But you know, with your success in podcasting, do you think if your mother was around today, she would get into the podcasting world? And what would her podcast oh. be? Of course she would. I am sure I would have been you know, sucked into it by her <laughs> because what's more, what, what, nothing made her happier than to get to like upset me. <laughs> you know, who watched her reality show or even watched the red carpet. I became known for rolling my eyes. <laughs> I mean, and going like, are you kidding me? So, so what kind of podcast could you imagine? Would it, would it have been just another fashion comedy? Oh, I don't, comedy? I don't, I don't even want to imagine Fair. because that's the kind of thing that I like have nightmares about thinking of all the cleanup I would have to do behind <laughs> her and all the arguments that we would have had about you can't say that mother oh the cleanup job oh I used to that's, I used to joke, it. that's the day cleanup yeah, job as I used to joke that spending a day with me was like you know learning how to do how to how to do curling because she was the giant weight and I would have to run ahead with the broom to try and keep it cracking straight. <laughs> now, so Melissa, you do have a book coming out. Yes, Talk it's to. coming out next May. Mm -hmm. What can we expect? It is, it is called Lies My Mother Told Me, Tall Tales from a Short Woman. <laughs> 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 oh, you got her. You got her good. You got her deep to the floor. <laughs> she said it with such a straight face. Lies my mother told me. Tall tales from a short woman. <laughs> good title, Mel. Are good you, title. Have you finished the book? Are you still in yes, the Yes, yes. I, I, I have turned it in. And, you know, granted, it was the, the manuscript got turned in late. This was supposed to be out a year ago. Mm -hmm. But... I hit massive writer's block, as did my writing partner. And unfortunately, we hit them separately. <laughs> so it really was, you know, a little bit complicated. We would just sit and have these sessions where we'd both be like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, so I want to know, when you finish this book and you do the last page, you put the, end, the period at the end, who is the first person you present the, that to? Is it your son? Is it a friend? Oh, that's good. Who is it that you yeah. let have the first read of, of a new book? Um, actually, Sabrina. Okay. <laughs> Your co-host. And I get notes Best with friend. her just shaking her head and going and calling us about my writing partner and going, oh, you two birds. <laughs> 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 Not you two birds. <laughs> you two birds. Was it, was it very therapeutic for you? This isn't a, ther this was a fun book. Yeah, okay. This is, um, it's, it's, it's a satire. Mm-hmm. It is um, a hyper-realistic version of how of stories my mother told, and you know it's it's just fun and silly, and you know there is a kernel of truth in each one, <laughs> but when you see it, it is very over the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's basically a lot of different events through history and life that we write the story of how my mother told them to me. When I give you my address for you to mail my Louis trunk, yep. put that book in there. I want yes. <laughs> for, for example, we write my mother's version of telling me the story of the first Thanksgiving. Listening. You know, <laughs> so it's all based on the premise that the pilgrims were terrible guests. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's, yeah. you know, that, 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 the, the basic, the premise of the story is about not being a bad guest. Oh, and, you know, the, the pilgrims okay. showed up for dinner. 
They changed the place cards around after, as we call her, Mrs. Squanto had so carefully, <laughs> carefully set the, done the seating chart. Uh -huh, oh my gosh. Uh -huh. They showed up overdressed, like they were going somewhere after when the invitation clearly said casual. <laughs> they showed up in their black and white and the boots with the buckles. <laughs> No one you asked know, for all that. <laughs> makes makes a host feel like, oh, really? Where are you going after? <laughs> you know. So it's 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 you know my mother meeting the Pope at theater after asking him to remove his hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What I love is so. But I'm saying so. Those are the. It's a very hyper, uh, not hyper realistic, but it's a very you know, world according yeah. to Joe, I would think, <laughs> as remembered by me. But still, with take, take home lessons, if I said it's casual, don't show up in your Sunday's best. But, and don't <laughs> move lessons. the place cards. The hostess has worked very, very hard to do a, to, to make sure everyone has someone interesting to talk to you next to them. don't mess with the seating chart. <laughs> like, that is just so That's tacky. You don't mess that with the so seating tacky. chart. And if you say so, you're coming, you, know, you show up, too. You show up. That, you know, that is part of her story yeah. of... The first Thanksgiving. What, what I know, love so it's is a lot of it's a it's a lot of that. It's it's you know good take. Like I said, good my take mother, away. Parents, yeah, but you know she met the Pope at the theater and it was very annoying at first because he wouldn't take off his hat and she couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> you do such a beautiful job of keeping your mom's legacy going, and yeah. with whether it's books, whether it's talking about her. I think you do such a great job because we all miss Joan. Yeah. I want to know if, you know, reboots right now are a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like they're remaking movies and redoing all this stuff. If they did Spaceballs, they did a reboot of Spaceballs, <laughs> would you play her role in a reboot of Spaceballs to keep her legacy going? Oh, God. You know, it would be just a voiceover. <laughs> but, huh. but who better remember, that wasn't that wasn't her in the costume. Um, I suppose I would hope that they would do it as a 2.0 version and let me use my voice. Um, but if not, I can do a pretty good imitation. No, I, I think it needs to be your voice. <laughs> that's the whole, that's the magic to it. You know what I'm saying? Like letting it live out. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, but I can do a pretty good imitation. <laughs> well, Melissa, this is a podcast discovery show. So what podcasts are you listening to these days? What, what recommendations do you have for us? I am listening to, oh, uh, Against the Rules with Michael Lewis. I am listening to, uh, oh God, I've listened to all the the revision, uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, mm. okay. Revisionist History. Those are the ones that are recently updated. Before we go, you teased it. I need to hear this Joan impression. Oh God, I can't do it <laughs> off the top. Um, uh, 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 oh God, it takes me a minute. Um, <laughs> courage, you call, uh, you want to see courage? Courage is every woman in this room. Every woman in this room. You want courage? Courage is making a gynecologist appointment and showing up. <laughs> That's courage. I love it. As I definitely have my appointment next Tuesday. Yeah. There's always a guy in the waiting room. I remember that. There's show. always a guy in the waiting room that you went to high school with. <laughs> and my, my gynecologist makes jokes. <laughs> Dr. Schwartz, at your cervix. I'm dilated to meet you. Say, ah. Dilated, dilated to meet you. To meet you. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't a really good one. But that's without, that's just like, off, but it sounds enough like They're her. laughing yeah. in, our, in our sound booth. So I think yeah, you're that sounded enough they're, like they're laughing, laughing through the wall. They're in three into different rooms. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't my good impression. It takes me a minute. I'm trying to remember. There's specific things I say to myself that get me the right tone. I can't think of it now. It's like, uh, yeah, I can't think of it. Right <laughs> but that was a bad impression. What did you think? It was an okay impression. That, 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 yeah, everyone was laughing. You did. Yeah. It accomplished. I'm dilated to, to meet you. Dilated Stay to on. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Melissa. And if you yeah. want to check out Melissa's podcast, group text, Melissa Rivers group text, mm -hmm. uh, you can head on over, obviously, to the Odyssey app or anywhere that you find podcasts. And then um, we'll put a link up on podsauce.com directly to it. Uh, Melissa, which episode? We're going to put a link up to your 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 creme de la creme episode. Which one was that I think again? That Gail King one was a really good. One. I oh, mean Gail. Gail King. I want Gail King up on the the website. Gail, Gail but, King. Um, 
We just did another one on sleep and no one can sleep. We do a lot about sleep. Um, uh, Gail King, I thought Summer Sanders. Summer Sanders, um, that's what it was. Summer yeah. Sanders. All right, we're gonna put up but, a link to Summer Sanders, yeah, then, Gail King. By the way, there's a lot of really good ones. Um, I did also, who I loved, the woman who wrote the books, No Given, the No Given yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun one too, because I found out that, wow, I give too many books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and I'm fresh out of them. I am fresh out of them. I'm fresh out. <laughs> fresh out. Don't go anywhere, guys. We got more. This is Pot Sauce.